Hello everyone, my name is Simone. I'm a junior at Queens University studying multimedia storytelling. And today I'll be interviewing Kiri Mitchell. Kiri is a senior scientist at Ingredion Incorporated and Kiri is a member of IFT. IFT stands for the Institute of Food Sciences. Hello, Kiri. Hi, Simone, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good, so my first question for you today is, what initially drew you to the science of food as a career path? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, I first became interested in food and nutrition actually when I started running in high school on my cross country team um, because I realized the value of proper nutrition and different eating habits and the power that food had to help me um, achieve faster times and also help my endurance. So I then kind of was thinking through my head, you know, if, if food has the power to do this, um, I would love to learn more about it. And so that's when I shadowed a professor at Colorado State University, which is the university that I attended um, in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is where I'm from. And that was um, a professor in the nutrition and foods and food science department. Um, and that's when I realized I want to study nutrition and dietetics. And then I went through my four years of studying that for my bachelor's. And then I continued um, pursuing my master's in nutrition and, and, food, and food science, um, partly due to actually participation in a, a lab that I worked on at campus. Um, and my professor mentioned that there was such thing as food science. I kind of had seen it in her curriculum, but uh, she had mentioned, you know, maybe this is something you'd like to pursue if you kind of want to go a different direction than the dietetics route. And so I've always loved food. I think the vast majority of people that are food scientists and people that work in the industry really love food. And so I also love food um, because of the aspect of fueling me and then also just for fun. And I think it's, I mean, I love spending a lot of time in the grocery stores and eating at restaurants. So I was pretty much hooked. Um, when I realized I could study food science, because I was, I was like, wow, I can't, like, you can't really beat, you know, studying, like my favorite subject. So that's kind of how I started. Um, and then I worked in just various um, positions. I worked at Jason's Deli when I was in high school. And that was kind of my first um, experience in the industry, um, in a very customer centric role. Um, and then worked as a dietary aide in a nursing home. And then I also worked as an intern at a vanilla company, um, also in Fort Collins. So that's kind of the trajectory of how I've ended up now here. Wow. I love your story and I love food too. So I can totally relate to your passion. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so what college courses or high school courses have you found to be the most applicable slash important for your occupation? Yeah. So I actually didn't even realize, like I said, I didn't realize that food science kind of was a possibility in high school. So college is really where I found most of the courses to be applicable to what I do now. Um, so I found like food chemistry. I took a food biotechnology, a food product development, um, and then a food systems impact on health and food security, and then also a food service systems, which kind of covered operations, production and purchasing. Um, categories. And I work in the plant-based meat alternative um, category. And so one thing that I really enjoy is how relevant um, the work is to address, you know, nutrition and health concerns while also creating something affordable and tasty. Um, so without a lot of these classes, that's kind of my foundation and to help broaden my learning. I think it would be harder for me to understand the importance of the work I do and then how I find meaning in my work. Um, I think the, the background I had in nutrition has really helped me understand from a consumer side um, how important that is to think of when you're creating different products. And then also in the, the food systems impacts on health and security and the food service systems were really um, important to help me realize kind of the impact on our, on, on the food that we create after it's manufactured and what, what happens after that when, and what the impacts might be on the environment, um, in different communities. I love that. Now let's say, um, I'm a high school student and mm -hmm. 
Um, my high school doesn't offer a lot of nutrition um, courses or health and wellness courses. What is your advice to those students who are seeking out um, courses that they can take now in high school that can prepare them for mm -hmm. you know, college courses? Yeah, I think in high school, I focused on a lot of basic uh, science. So chemistry and biology, I think were the ones that I, if I can remember correctly, that's, that's probably what I would focus on. And then some math courses as well, just to enhance that foundation. Um, I didn't, I mean, even in high school, I didn't really know, but I think having a, a stronger like science background um, definitely en enhanced it. And so it gave me a better foundation for when I was in college and I was able to take kind of more specific to food courses. Thank you so much. That's very mm -hmm. important. Uh, so how did you engage with IFT or Feeding Tomorrow, the foundation of IFT as a student and or a new professional? Yeah, definitely. So I when I first heard about Institute of Food Technologists, it was actually after making the jump from nutrition and dietetics over to food science, um, because I previously was part of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is the main association that governs um, folks in the nutrition realm. So I kind of naturally was like, well, what is there for food science? And that's kind of how I found the Institute of Food Technologists, um, because I previously was part of the student association on the other association. There's a lot of association words here. Um, and then I naturally was like, oh, I'd love to be part of this student association with affiliated with um, the Institute of Food Technologists. Um, I also wanted to join because my university didn't have a ton of resources for me at the time. Um, I think they're definitely um, increasing their presence with food science. But when I was there, we didn't really have um, like a, a club or any like specific resources. So I was really um, looking for something that could fulfill that for me. So I started off by serving as the chair of the Excellence in Leadership Award. And then I was asked to apply for the president-elect position, um, which I was very nervous for, um, but ultimately I was nominated. And then I um, ended up serving in that capacity. So you start off as president-elect and then president and then past president. So it's a three-year term. Um, and then while in this role, um, we have the opportunity to serve on the IFT board of directors and then also feeding tomorrow. Um, and so that was such a valuable experience because by serving in the office of the president, you can, we have the ability to serve on the, um, on the IFT board. And so we would attend all the board meetings. Um, and then as students, we had, we were uniquely positioned to provide the student perspective and make sure that, you know, we were being represented in the meetings. Um, so that was super valuable. And um, now, now that I live in Maryland, I, I recently moved here. So I currently serve um, on the local section, which is kind of how we distinguish different regions within the broader IFT. We have what we call sections. And so I'm part of our local Maryland section. Um, and this um, has been helping me to network with different people in my region and then also um, I've gotten to really expand on my event planning skills, which is fun because I'm new to the area. So I'm doing a lot of research and learning um, what organizations maybe we want to partner with. Um, so my, my work with IFT, it seems like it just continues, which is really, really good. Um, and I really value like everything that they've provided for me. Wow, that is amazing. And congrats on all your accomplishments. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. So you are a busy, busy woman. So could you please describe your typical work day and what that entails? Yeah, yeah, I'll break it up into office and then in person or office and then at home. Um, I'm at the office about 75% of the time um, and it kind of fluctuates between 50 and 75% of the time depending on how much stuff we have to do in person. Um, and when I describe kind of in person, I'm, I will use the term like bench top or I'm working at the bench, which is just essentially we're in like a big uh, lab, like a big kitchen lab. And so when I'm doing stuff at the office, we work on like a bench top. So it's a smaller scale than what I'll refer to as like a, our pilot plant. 
Um, so in the office, very active on the bench top, working on different formulations for creating new plant-based meat alternatives or optimizing um, different formulas we uh, currently already have. Um, I might be trying new colors and flavors from different flavor houses or color houses, which if you get into that ever, that's, it's crazy to understand kind of where flavors and colors come from, but they come from different um, other companies and they can help you to um, flavor your food and color it to the desired outcome, which is really important when we talk about you know, plant-based meat alternatives, because we are trying to achieve a texture and color that you can't normally just uh, uh, like have with just the normal um, plant base. Um, and so I might also be conducting new ingredient testing. Um, we have a mini pilot plant in our facility. So if we have the avail availability to um, scale up uh, something that we're working on, or I will go to another location within the US that has a bigger location and will scale up to make sure that all the stuff we're doing on the bench can be um, done at a larger scale. Um, I could be working on different customer projects. So that's maybe working on different prototypes or troubleshooting ingredients. If a customer that currently takes a or buys an ingredient from us um, is having trouble, we'll work with them to make sure that they can um, have success um, and then specifically, since I work at an ingredient company and on a food system team, a lot of what I do, like I said, is formulating and the formulating consists of taking different blends of starch, hydrocolloid, and also plant-based protein to create those meat alternatives, such as like burgers, chicken nuggets, meatball, hot dog, deli slices, anything, even fish products. So and anything that contains animal products, um, we try to make and showcase our portfolio um, that's all plant-based. Um, and then I also, we also work with our sensory team. So everything that we create, we wanna pass through our sensory team um, and even people in our office just to try so that we can get an understanding of how a consumer might perceive the product or um, if people are liking a certain flavor or if there's things that they'd like to change, we wanna be able to do that before we finally commercialize something. Um, and then when I'm at home, that's a lot of working on different formulations, responding to emails, attending meetings, watching webinars. I really enjoy watching webinars. Um, a lot of times they're focused on my category. So because plant-based meat alternatives are always changing, there's always something new. Um, it's a really great way to stay on top of all the trends and to understand what other people are doing within the space. And then uh, we can even partner with new vendors and manufacturers for product co-creation in case, because a lot of our customers um, might be using different equipment or in a facility in which we can't replicate. So we might need to go there, um, update data sheets, capture and document any active work that we've been working on since we fluctuate from in-person to um, at home. It's really important that we stay very up to date on record keeping, what we observed when we were in their lab, or any notes um, that we want to jot down. Because when you're doing a lot of um, prototype testing, things can get lost because I, so, you know, it's really hard to remember things from weeks, weeks on a different week. And so um, that's something that is very, I've learned to get very, very good at of as soon as I, you know, I'm done with the test, I take notes as I, as I can. But um, I do that at home to make sure I haven't missed anything. And then also just working on presentations to showcase kind of what we've been developing for our business development and marketing teams. Um, so then they can translate those learnings to our go to market team and then help address different customer needs. So that that was a lot, but it's really it's really like no day is is the same, it seems, but there's kind of these patterns that I observe that happen, but then, by working in the food industry, I think it's really helped me um, keep a very agile work environment and kind of be ready for, you know, if something is done early or something I need, something pops up, you kind of have to know what to prioritize. But I, I do value that about the job because it keeps me just on my tiptoes all the time. Wow, that sounds amazing. And it sounds like you are always doing something new, which I love. Um, yes. 
So what is one aspect of this career that people would not necessarily expect? Yeah, I think how like multidisciplinary the field is. So I mentioned earlier, you know, all the different courses you can take, but within that too, there's different backgrounds that people come from. Um, and we all kind of get to work together, which I think is so great because you don't have to necessarily enjoy science or have a science background. There's, you know, marketing, business development, sales, they're all very important and they're much needed in the industry. Um, so even if you don't have, you know, the food science or the nutrition or chemistry or engineering, um, that's okay. There's something kind of for everyone, but also if you do have all those, or if you have interest in any of those, you can really apply it to food, which I think is, is so fun and something that I love because I think everyone has to eat and a lot of people love food. So being able to take something that you learn in or get a major in, um, and then applying it to something maybe non-traditional um, like food, I think is is super interesting. And I think a lot of people, you know, stumble into this field. Sometimes they might not come from a food science, but they might come from um, like an engineering background and become like a process engineer working at a manufacturing plant. Um, so it's just really cool that we can get all, we can attract a lot of different backgrounds and talent. Um, but it's all housed kind of under the food industry. Wow, that is so interesting. Um, so you mentioned earlier in this interview how you used to work at Jason's Deli and then you were a dietitian at a nursing home. So how did these opportunities come about to you? Because I know we just talked about how um, it is great to be diverse in your interest. Mm -hmm. So what would be one piece of advice that you would give someone who is interested in so many different areas, but wants to work with food, you know, in their future? Yeah, I think basically any experience you can get working in the food industry is helpful. I know when I, like I said, I, I started working in a very unglamorous, um, very customer centric role, um, which really helped me to see kind of where the outputs are with our foods and how they get to consumers plates. Um, so, you know, taking on a job, which may not seem the most glamorous could can really help you kind of get that well-roundedness. Um, and then internships are valuable too. If you can get one, if you can obtain one, can really help you get your foot in the door of a, of a company um, and then build your skills within the company. And then probably research opportunities um, while in college or if you can partake in a research study, I think they're super valuable and fun. Um, I worked in the clinical nutrition lab and that was great exposure to see how clinical trials are run and conducted. Um, so I think that, and then any experience maybe with the 4-H club um, will be helpful to get an understanding of what happens. And then um, I can't forget IFT. So whether it's your local section or the student association, you know, there really is a place for everyone um, and it helps you stay connected to the different industry trends, expand your network, um, so as anything that kind of relates to food, which a lot of things relate to food, I think really helps bolster up your resume and also your experience. So you can see how each input, um, or each experience that you get can has on your understanding of the food industry in general. That's amazing. And you mentioned 4-H, what is um, that for the viewers who don't know? Yeah. So I actually am not as familiar with 4-H, but I, to my understanding, um, it's an agricultural program that I think people that are in that are younger or in like elementary or high school can participate. Um, I think they have um, different award categories. So if you want to, you know, showcase an animal or showcase something that you created, um, but it is I think geared more toward agricultural, the agricultural category. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably not the expert on it, but um, I have heard it kind of used in conjunction with the food, the food industry. If you come from like 4-H, it kind of provides you a good um, a background that might be relevant. All right. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, so how has your participation in IFT or Feeding Tomorrow impacted your career success? Yeah, I definitely would not be where I am today without my valuable experience with IFT. So I mentioned earlier that my university did not have a huge 
food science program or even a club while I was there. So for me to have that exposure um, and the access to that large network of other students and events that I could participate in um, was very um, helpful, helpful for me to see, you know, the different universities and their programs, what students were, where they were interning, you know, what they were learning. Um, so I wasn't as siloed in my own um, small, my small university um, food science program. So I think that it just really helped me to see, you know, what other students are doing. And it also helped um, to expand my network because I didn't, beyond my like fellow peers, I didn't really get to network with that many people. So when I attended, you know, our, the board meetings or in-person, the in-person IFT yearly event, um, that was so valuable to see people that I think I've only heard of and then to, you know, have conversations with them. So I think that was extremely valuable. And then also my leadership skills have increased and improved um, because of my responsibility serving on the student association and um, having to be an advocate for students. So it's really done a lot for me. And I think there was times when I, you know, first started, I was really apprehensive and it was, it was a lot of work, but I think now looking back, I, it has really paid off and helped me to become you know, who I am and a lot more confident in my role and helped me see to how I want to continue supporting students and also, you know, giving back to my profession. Wow, that's amazing. And um, I know that you're just going to continue excelling in your career as we move forward. So thank, thank you. you. You're so welcome. My last question today is, what words of wisdom do you have for someone considering this occupation? Yeah, so I, I think it kind of is similar to um, what I mentioned earlier about getting uh, any experience you can get in the food industry. So, you know, if you um, start small and just work at um, like a fast food or a restaurant, getting that kind of experience and then kind of moving up into maybe an internship or um, working on a campus lab, I think is helpful. And also just keeping an open mind is, is very helpful. I think there's been a lot of opportunities I was presented with where it seems kind of daunting and just very, maybe not what I thought, if I thought of a linear path of like where I could get, it didn't really fit in, but I think all of the experiences that I've had have been helpful in their own way. And they're, they've all been very unique. And so I wouldn't, you know, if there's something that maybe falls a little bit outside of what you traditionally think of food science or what you think maybe is the like model, you know, I think there, it, you can have really any experience and bring that in and, you know, be able to tailor it or to apply it so that it can, um, be applicable to the food industry, but really any experience you can get, you know, I think also like studying abroad, I did that. And I, you know, when I was doing that, I didn't think it actually had that much application, but then now looking back, I think they were really valuable pieces from that. So, you know, super different experiences like that, I think have been really helpful and, and making sure that you can say like diverse, keep an open mind and getting pretty much any experience that you can is, is helpful. Oh, yes. I love that because you never know, like you just stated, what exactly can help. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Hiri, for this amazing interview. You gave us a lot of information and um, I'm enjoying hearing your story and I'm sure the viewers are enjoying um, your story as well. So thank you everyone for joining us today and I hope you learned more about IFT. For more information, please visit the IFT Q Career page and find out how IFT can help you with your career development. Until next time, have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.